Alright guys, welcome to another Autronics video. In this video we're working on an electric scooter powered by Segway. I believe this is an ES2 model. And so this has been dropped in by a customer who complained of a fault in this module here. So let's uh, have a look. So we've got some flashing lights, flashing beeping kind of thing going on. So we've got a spanner service symbol on here. And we've got some flashing lights going down here. So let's have a look at uh, at what it is. So we'll just pair this up and let's just have a look. So I've got a brake hall sensor error. Please check brake handle, dashboard and related cables. Okay, so let's... Uh, so I believe what this is talking about is this one here. Or oh, there's a brake one down here. So I believe it will be this one here. So... Um, Let's have a look. Let's take this apart. Uh, let's turn it off. Noise is rather loud. So let this. Uh, let's take this apart. Um, it's partially disassembled anyway. The handle grips are on my table here, and uh, let's take it out from here. Let's put it on the bench over there, and let's begin testing this and uh, see if we can fix it. So bear with me while I position in the table. Okay. So I've got it. Um, taken out of the scooter and we have it here so this is the one cable that went to the port uh, on the scooter so we've got this main module here so let's begin by uh, removing this um, so looking at this it looks like it's been in a bit of a rough ride it's all these scratches and stuff here but regardless let's have a look so let's pry up on these edges here so it said a brake uh, brake hall sensor. Okay, so that's a uh, hall sensor. If you know about hall sensors, they're about a magnetic field. They work within that, so it's um, allowing a certain amount of voltage or something like that to pass through. Wow, this is quite in there. Okay, stuck. Let's pull this out feed that through okay here we go so firstly what we want to check someone's been inside this okay um, firstly what we want to check is we want to check our cable connections so remember it said the related cables at the end of the message and so this is the cables here so I believe uh, I think it's this one here it's going to this here yep okay so what we want to do is firstly check this connection and if it's all tight and secured there's no loose cabling so damage to this cabling or anything like that and this one's the speed i believe okay so it's fine so let's um actually don't know how i'm gonna do this because i need to power this on and check but um, okay, regardless, so it's it's telling me that it's got a brake hall effect sensor. So hall effect sensors are in here. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's disconnect. Actually, let's disconnect all of our cables. This is going to be a bit of a mess. So this is out. Let's put that to the side. Here's that light. Put that to the side. Don't need that. And let's slide this out. Obviously, there was another cap here, I believe. Um, which is this one here that slid over this but let's, uh, let's pull this out so let's bring this out okay that's that that's that one there and now let's have a look here so we have this one here which is quite in a bad condition okay and um, let's open this up and have a look if uh, how, how do we change this so um holofix sensors so okay so the way this one opens up is cap that goes around here you can push this through like that and this pops out and first thing what i want to check is these two little magnets on here so if you can see in that camera that magnet and that magnet okay so there's north and south poles in there so once the sensor stays in between here depending on where its positioning is it'll either 
provide voltage or it won't provide voltage. So yeah, it's the easiest way to explain it. So if you want to learn about uh, Hall effect sensors, you can Google them and find out about that. So I think this has got a bit of rust inside here as well. Um, so that sensor sits in between here. And what it does, it, it moves. Uh, once you press this down, it rotates and that sensor moves in between um, this positive, sorry, this a north and a, and a south pole here. And then depending on where it is, obviously it, it gives out voltage. So that's something about Hall effect sensors. So firstly, when you take this out, ensure that these magnets are on this little square hole here, not stuck to this spring here. So in the past, I've seen that these have been stuck on here. And so ensure that these are on there. So this spring is quite easy. There's a little uh, hole here where the spring can sit into. So I can 100% ensure that that magnet, those magnets are in its proper place. So we don't need that. Let's move that out of the way. And um, let's begin by taking this sensor out. And uh, let's check the sensor. So firstly, I can see that the cabling is not damaged, not kinked or anything like that. It's a little bit of uh, splice into the cable there, but I don't think that's too far, too deep. So let's check that just in case. We don't want to assume anything. We want to thoroughly check. I'm just using a dental pick. And uh, yeah, yep. Yeah, I think I can confirm that that's okay. So let's, uh, let's take the sensor out of here. Let's put it on our breadboard and um, let's determine what's actually going on with the sensor. So bear with me while I assemble my breadboard and um, I'll show you the te testing of uh, this sensor here. Okay, so bear with me. Okay, so we're back here. So what we have done is remove this holofix sensor from the casing of this here. And the way this sits is it sits inside this bit here. And so the way these work is this Hall effect sensor uses a magnetic, changes in a magnetic field for this to operate. So if we present, so that's your magnetic, sorry, there's your um, Hall effect sensor, there's your magnet. And if we present it like that, uh, whether it's now a north or uh, south position to this uh, Hall effect sensor, the changes in that magnetic field determine what sort of voltage is going to be provided out. So this is a 5 volt um Holofix sensor. So I have my breadboard prepped up here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to probe this in here like so. Okay, ensure that it's all the way in, which it is. Hopefully you can see that. All right, that's it there. And I've got my multimeter here and we're going to plug up some voltage to our circuit. So let's provide 5 volts to the circuit. So we've got 5 volt available here. And if I present the magnet north side to this uh, Hall effect sensor, I should get a change in the voltage here. All right, so let's just do that. Okay, so we notice that there's no changes and we notice that our uh, magnet is facing that way and that way as well. So let's take this out. So we just use one so we know which, which way we're going to present to. Okay, so let's present to this way, no changes. And let's present to this way, so no changes. Okay, so now that determines that this is faulty here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change this out with a working one. So I'm going to just disconnect my power here. And um, I'm going to connect up my little Hall effect sensor here. So the one I have is this little one here. And remove this old one out of circuit. And this one is part of a circuit as well and comes with the Arduino set and what I'm going to do is connect this into this circuit here and there's a Hall effect sensor on here already so these ones can be found at uh, Mouser or AliExpress or any Arduino kit that you may find so 3144 is the Hall effect sensor number on here um, let's see if we can see that yeah okay so let's plug this up and so we know that's plugged up here apply some voltage to our circuit and we notice we automatically get 3.6 volts and now what I'm going to do is present the uh, magnet north side or, or either way to this Hall effect sensor and we're going to see if the light turns on or not so we present it here we notice no light but uh, the voltage on the uh, multimeter still stayed the same and we're going to present the other side so we notice as we get close to it the light turns on and it turns off and we go again 
and we notice the battery voltage goes down to 1.764 or something like that so we move away do it once more it comes in goes back and we go forward again and nothing okay so we know that that's enough for me to determine that this uh, Hall effect sensor that's part of uh, this packaging here is damaged and it's faulty so I'm gonna replace this one out with this that's on here and I'm gonna assemble it up and uh, let's see how we can um, plug this up into the module back onto this here and determine if our fault is erased and we can get this ES2 uh, Segway electric scooter back in operational so let me just do that and uh, we'll see how we go from there okay so I've got it all soldered in and heat shrink and it's sitting in here please pay if you're doing this please pay attention to the way that this indent is facing so if that's facing the north or the south ensure when you take it off just take a photo of this which way this indent is facing so I've got it all assembled there so let's uh, let's push it back into this little gap here this is quite a tedious process um, but it can't be done a little bit of patience let's do that okay Okay, so it's up there. Okay, so we're sitting quite flush here. All right, so there we go. Just put a little bit of tightening on that. All right, cool. And the way this goes back on is you want that sensor between those two magnets there, right? So there's a hole on here. If you can see that, that's here. Okay. And what that goes into is goes into this little notch there so you can't go wrong and so once you line that up just hold it ever so lightly like that and don't try and press this in fully okay because if you notice let me try to show you this but it's that little with the silver screw is that little notch is hitting against a little piece of plastic so if you force that in you're going to break the sensor and so what we're going to do is you're going to rotate and you want it to go into this area here so so this little area here so if you rotate rotate and it'll come into that zone there and then what you do so let me just get this lined up yep so once it's just, once, once you've got it there okay what you do is just press in and that locks it in right and so now you've got that operational so you can move this Yep, that's how you know. So if you try and force it, you're going to break something in there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to test if this sensor that we've put in here is working with that, with the magnets that are in this circuit. All right. So because um, it'll definitely work with these ones here, but I want to know if it's going to be working with those magnets here. Sometimes um, those magnets can become faulty and not even give you that uh, level of um, strength. For those uh, whole effect sensors to work so what I've got here so let's test that out so now we've got a little circuit all assembled up here with that LED up again and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna back probe these little junctions here so I've got obviously the red one is positive 5 volt probe that there I've got a ground which I'm gonna represent as my blue wire and I've got my signal which is the blue one uh, which I'm going to represent from my uh, board here as the green wire so what I'm going to do is I will apply my voltage to the circuit now so let's grab our 5 volt reference voltage so ground to ground okay ensuring that that's connected properly and that's connected properly so let's get the meter in focus and we've got five volts going in and let's rotate this so right now I should not get any voltage on here and as I rotate this I should get something on the LED there we go so as we rotate this we notice the brightness on the LED so as I slowly increase so we know this Hall effect sensor is working and that one there is the faulty one and we'll remove that from the little board so this is the one that we'd removed and the one we replaced here is part of that so let's do that. Here we go. 
yeah okay cool so we know this is functioning okay the breadboard's okay and the led works on and my voltages are okay here so maximum volts i'm getting is about three point something so let's plug my meter in it'll help to see what voltage i'm getting so let's dial that up so i'm getting 3.2 that's sufficient enough and at baseline we're getting 0 0.8 that turns it off and we got brightness and we got off cool so that tells me that that's functioning okay um disconnect my circuit and i'll reassemble this back into the um handlebar and uh let's see if we can uh, erase that error that's on the segway so let's get rid of all of that and let's all right guys so i've got it all assembled up we've put the whole effect sensor back in here we've got all this assembled up secured in we've just got to put the handlebars on so what we'll do is we'll turn this on see if we have got rid of our error so let's have a look so there's no more spanner on here so that's working okay and the way this works is it won't work initially by just pressing that the wheels won't spin so the way this works is if we spin this and i'm going to get my assistant to help me out here so i'm going to spin that and we're going to press that um to do that again so, yep spin that so that's working we're going this speed and what we're going to do is we're going to press brake okay so we'll stop moving so that's cool so what we look now is we look at this here once we press our brake that's working okay and Yep, so here we go. So now we can take this for a spin and we have successfully fixed this uh, ES2 Segway electric scooter. So hopefully this video has helped somebody out there and thank you for watching.